In the Northern Hemisphere, we're currently entering fall, the time of the year on the Celtic wheel that is associated with water. When I first moved down to these mountains to study plants, I knew that I was interested in medicine, specifically herbal medicine. What I didn't know is that I'd get incredibly fascinated with water as medicine. Where I live is a very water-rich landscape. Water, in many ways, is the first medicine of this place. So while I love continuing to work with plants, I also deepen my appreciation of water as medicine every day. I'm Asia Suler of One Willow Apothecaries, and this is your guide to working with water magic. The American anthropologist and nature writer Lauren Easley is quoted as saying, if there is magic on this planet, it is contained in water. And really, I couldn't agree more. Water is the foundation of life here on our planet. Without water, life as we know it wouldn't exist. Is there anything more magical than that? Water covers three-fourths of our planet, and it makes up 65% of our body. It is also the only natural substance found at all three states of being, liquid, vapor, and solid, at the Earth's normal range of temperatures. With this, we can see that water is a shapeshifter. Water has the ability to um, move and grow and change depending on its environment. Water is also the universal solvent. Water dissolves more substances than anything else. And it's at the building block of how we function and how all the beings on this planet function as well. For example, plants use water as a medium to actually create photosynthesis with their cells. Water is also incredibly responsive. We see this anytime we make tea. Water has this ability as a universal solvent to take up the qualities of those herbs. But water is also responsive to things like the moon. We see this with the tides. We also know that water will respond to the Earth's magnetic field, as well as explosions on the sun. So really, water is so much more sensitive than we thought before. On a more esoteric or energetic level, I've loved watching the work of Dr. Masaru Emoto unfold and reach a wide audience throughout the world. So if you haven't heard of him, Dr. Masaru Emoto is a Japanese scientist and researcher who studied the way water interacts with thought and water interacts with intention, water interacts with music. What he did that was really interesting is he took pictures of the water as it crystallized, and he found that the same water would crystallize in totally different formations depending on which thoughts, intentions, or music it was exposed to. It's a really beautiful set of experiments that he did and something that has really inspired me to see how water is more sensitive than we even realize. That water has the ability to respond to our moods, our thoughts, and these subtle lines of energy running throughout our lives. Water, of course, is foundational to the belief systems of all land-based and indigenous peoples. Water very literally is life. Even today, if you go and visit sacred sites across Europe, you'll find that many of these sites were actually built on top of previous sacred sites, many of which were there to enshrine a spring. Natural springs are the proto-sacred site. They're the first sacred sites that human beings truly observed, and it makes sense. Springs are literally a bastion of life. Springs are places where we know, no matter what's happening in the world, we can still be nourished and fed. I had the opportunity once to take a class with David Winston, an herbalist who now lives in the Northeast, but who has a background in Cherokee medicine. And he was down here in these mountains to give a workshop about Cherokee medicine, which is a tradition he was trained and invited into. And one of the things that he said that struck me so deeply before we even started talking about plants was that the first medicine in the Cherokee pharmacopoeia is water. 
And what he said about this is that in traditional Cherokee society, even today, the first medicine is always take it to the water. Whatever you're experiencing, whether it's heartache or a cold, take it to the water. Even children who are experiencing colic, it was traditional to take them to the water. And living here in these mountains, I can see why water would be considered the first medicine. So now, whenever I'm struggling, I ask myself, can I just take this to the water and let it wash downstream? So there are a few practices that I've developed over time to work with water as the medium of magic that it truly is. So the first practice is what I call water whispering. If you've ever sat by the ocean or a bubbling brook, you know that there are many voices to water, and we can receive messages just by sitting with the water. So in water whispering, I go and sit by the creek normally outside my house, but sometimes to wilder places in nature, and I simply I put my worries, my questions out to the water, and then I listen. Now for me, it doesn't normally come in as words that I hear physically hitting my eardrums, but more like an inner state of communication. I've been amazed sometimes what I've been able to see and understand and feel just by sitting with the water and listening to how it's whispering to me. If you don't have any running water nearby your home, if you don't live by uh, any kind of river or streams, you can try this exercise with a bowl of water. I actually think gazing into a bowl of water or gazing into a chalice of water is what predates crystal bowl gazing. So get yourself a bowl of water and enter into a meditative state, staring onto the surface of the water and just notice if you can receive any kind of message or input from the water as you let yourself sink into this relaxed state of being. The next water magic ritual are water elixirs. So we've already explored how water can be a medium for actually taking on not only the chemical constituents of say a plant, but also the energetics of plants, but also words, thoughts, ideas. So the easiest kind of water elixir you can make is to actually make an intention and tape it onto a bottle of water and let it sit overnight. This is a beautiful way to get clear on what kind of magic you want to manifest in your life and ask that water to become a part of it. And then of course you can drink this water, you can use this water outside to sanctify a place, however feels good to you to work with this water. You could even put it in your bath water or wash your hands with it. And then of course we can get even more complex with some of our water elixirs. For example, you can make a stone elixir. Working with any stone in the quartz family, like clear quartz or rose quartz, is a safe way to go about making an elixir. And the way that you do this is you just put the stone in a glass of water overnight and then you drink it first thing in the morning. I like to use clear quartz for this because I find that clear quartz has this ability to actually take on my intention. It's highly programmable. This is why we use clear quartz in all of our technology. You can also make flower essences with water. Most people are familiar with the practice of flower essences through Dr. Edward Bach, who was the physician around the turn of the century who first started experimenting with floating flowers in water and then using that diluted water to treat all kinds of ailments, both physical and emotional. But the truth is that you can make an essence from anything with water. If it's true that water responds to our thoughts, our intentions, our emotions, then you could set a jar of water out in the middle of a gathering to capture the energy of that gathering. You could set a bowl of water out underneath the full moon and capture that energy. I was once at an event where a circle of women were weaving and someone put a bowl of water in the middle of that circle to capture the energy of women weaving. The key with this kind of magic is the more you're clear on your intention, the stronger this medicine will be. As we've seen, water responds to thoughts. So if you are clear with your intention of what you're asking this elixir to become, then the medicine will turn out that much more potent. I think this is important to think about going back to the fact that we are 65% water. If water is that programmable and that sensitive, is it not the case that the water inside of our body is actually reacting to our thoughts, specifically our thoughts about ourselves? So I love thinking about 
water magic in part as actually learning how to program myself and the water inside of my body to resonate with frequencies of joy, love, and gratitude. The last water magic ritual is anointing. Anointing is a very old and very sacred practice, and it's one of my favorite things to do on a daily basis here. So I tend to anoint with spring water around my home. There's a bunch of springs that seep out of the hillsides here, and I normally will visit them and just dip two fingers in and anoint my temples, anoint my crown, anoint my heart or the back of my neck. I have access to you know, this amazing spring water, but no matter where you are in the world, you can anoint yourself with water. To anoint yourself, just get the the most energetically special water you can find. So whether that's water that you've made an elixir from, or water from a sacred place in the world, or maybe water from a local stream that, even if it's not the cleanest water, perhaps if you've worked with it in prayer, you might want to use this as an anointing water as well. I also have water that I've collected from sacred springs around the world, and sometimes I'll use this water to anoint as well. So the process of anointing is similar to how we think about anointing within the church with quote-unquote holy water. From this perspective, all water is holy, however, and so we use this water to bless ourselves. You can also use this water to bless others. So one practice is actually dipping a Um, bundle of fresh herbs into water like this and actually cleansing yourself that way or bringing it into a sauna if you have access to that and showering yourself with those droplets. What an amazing way to anoint yourself. You can also anoint the world around you. So I love giving back some of the sacred water, water that I have been a part of collecting or sanctifying to the earth. And so on this note, one of the things that makes water so magic for us, is that we have such a deep relationship with it. So one practice that I like to do to continually give back to the water is to bless the water. And there's one really easy way to do this that gives you a beautiful container um, to create this, this prayer. And that is to go out to a source of wild water, to cup the water in your hands. And during the time that it takes for that water to slip out your fingers and back into its stream or into the lake, Pray with the water. Bless the water in whatever way makes sense for you with the prayers that you call on or a song or just the heartfelt intention that this water go back into its source and bring with it your blessings, your love, and your prayer for all the waters on our earth. So I love talking about different rituals and ways of connecting to the earth in a way that deepens our presence here and our awareness of the magic that lives inside of us. So if you're interested in more of this type of content, definitely check out my online catalog of courses. There are so many fascinating courses to choose from that focus on specific topics and how we can work with plants and stones often to deepen our connection to the natural world. And once you're on my website, you can sign up to become a part of the inner circle where I share these thoughts, videos, meditations, and rituals directly to you in your inbox two times every month. So now I would love to hear from you, all my beautiful water ceremonialists out there. What kind of rituals or practices do you have to work with water? You can leave a comment in the comment section below, and I would love to hear how all of us are using our creativity to deepen our connection to this sacred wellspring of life here on Earth.